I want to focus on dosing and administration of cannabidiol. And so my next question is, is it better to have a, a pure synthetic cannabidiol or a natural extract and why? That is a very interesting question. And you're right, there are synthetic forms of CBD available now. And by definition, they have nothing to do with plants. They are lab made synthetic. Now, there is evidence for the entourage effect, and this is to do with the additive effect of taking more than one cannabinoid from the plant. And this can only be achieved by taking something like a broad spectrum CBD distillate, which contains other cannabinoids. Now, I'm talking about legal cannabinoids, not controlled ones because the level of THC must be non-detectable for a CBD product to be legally available on the market. So this entourage effect can only be achieved from broad spectrum distillate. And this is what nature can provides for the consumer. Could you just clarify, what is THC? THC is the, a very abundant cannabinoid, and of course, it's a controlled cannabinoid. It's the one that's associated with producing a high. Um, so this is something that isn't legal. It's something that should be only present in non-detectable amounts. So that is so tiny as to virtually be 0%. Mm -hmm. mm, thank you. You've explained the benefits of a natural extract. Now, presumably this has to be standardized in some way. Yes, uh, firstly, if you look from the growing side of it, um, I'll give Nature Can as an example because I've looked at all of the documentation through the supply chain. So it's a very good example and valid. Um, right from the seed that's grown, from an organic farm um, through to the processing, which is a very sophisticated, high-tech, mechanized process uh, to eliminate the THC and to actually extract the CBD and indeed some of the other cannabinoids that, are, for example, CBG, which is that there's a lot of interest in and research in that field. So they are left in the extract, but what you don't want is taken out. Now, I must also add that at every stage of the supply chain, testing has, has to be done by an accredited laboratory and it must meet the strict limits for um, the content within the product. So that goes right through to finished goods. So when you take that oil and then put it into a capsule, it's still tested at the end of that manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And does this mean that there is a, a recommended dose? Now, the Food Standards Agency in the UK recommend a maximum of 70 milligrams of CBD per day in total. So if you are taking some drops, as I showed you, you may be taking a capsule during the day. As we know, there are also foods containing CBD. So it's great to be mindful of what you're taking in total. And 70 milligram is the current maximum recommendation. Um, in fact, uh, on some company's website, including NatureCan, they're very careful to inform you if you're taking this product, this product and this product in these amounts, you'll be within. So that's very good advice and should be followed. Now, that is the current situation. But I must say there are safety studies in progress right now. And we know that CBD is safer in higher doses than this. So it's a cautious approach and rightly so. But the evidence will be there, and it is likely that the dosage recommendation will increase 
uh, in the future. But for now, people should take notice of that. Um, you know, also, uh, it doesn't mean you should take 70 milligrams. Start lower and build up and take it slowly until you find the right dose that's working for you. Everyone is different with this, um, but you know, certainly start, you may want to start about 20 milligrams a day and see how you get on with that. Build up slowly to a maximum of 70. Thank you.